had loved the fact that our home leave location was the same place. And so unlike so many other people in the Foreign Service or with CIA who have to kind of divide their time, it, we thought we had, this is the easiest path. We can just go back to Richmond and then go out to where all, all, wherever else we're going to be. But it really got us thinking. And so in 2014, we really decided to just try something different. And we committed to let's do five years. Five years if we don't like being back in Virginia, if the private sector doesn't work for me, like I can go back to CIA, it, it, that'll be fine. And so, you know, five years seemed like a good chunk of time. It makes the investment in buying a house worth it, all of those sorts of things. Um, and by the way, we hit five years this August, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and, and so I started looking around for companies and coming out of a job that I, deeply, deeply loved, that was a complete lifestyle, uh, that really informed in an interesting way every aspect of how I engaged with people. Um, it, it was a job I was driven to do that I made a ton of sacrifices for. You know, I, I didn't want to just get a job. And so I spent a lot of time having coffees and meeting with people. I also had the benefit of, well, you could call it a benefit, of my background check or my, my background clearance process where they were, um, the, the process of declassifying my job with CIA took about nine or 10 months. So I had about nine or 10 months when I didn't have a real resume and it was a lot of just getting to know people throughout the Richmond area. And through a number of links, I was uh, made aware of uh, Royal and Company. And it was a very interesting company from my perspective, having spent zero time in the private sector, uh, because it, the focus was really on relationships. And so with CIA, everything is a relationship. Because when you're asking someone to commit espionage on behalf of the United States government, when you are asking someone to risk his or her life to tell you vital information that might really drive American policy, they have to trust you. They may not like you, they may not have anything else in common with you, but they have to trust you. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I found so interesting about Royal & Company um, is that it was such a relationship-based company where um, you know, I, I in my position there was working directly with colleges and universities, helping them meet their recruitment goals and you know, engineering schools that wanted more women or state schools that wanted more out-of-state kids and schools that wanted more racial or geographic diversity. Um, but they have to trust you and they have to, they have to believe and understand that you know why it is that they're trying to affect this change um, within their, uh, on their campus. And so for me, it, it, when I found out about the company, when I spent some time there, the fact that from start to finish, it's a relationship focused company, um, it, it was a very good fit for me. So, uh, so that's where I started in the private sector. And I, I do have one funny story. I had one time we had an error. Our team messed up and sent something out on behalf of the clients that it wasn't a huge issue, but the, one of the uh, men on my team comes in just, I mean, like pale and kind of frantic. And he tells me about this mistake that happened. And, he, and he's kind of stammering a little bit. And I said, okay. And I guess I, I didn't really react very much. And so he leaves and somebody comes back and tells me that he's just flipping out, worried beside himself, just so upset. And evidently he thought I was, my calm was just anger. So he's freaking out because he thinks I'm freaking out. So I call him into my office and I said, listen, we're gonna have to have a conversation about this. Like, I'm the one who has to call the client and say we made this mistake. So I don't know what you're freaking out about. <laughs> And secondly, it's something we can fix, right? And thirdly, nobody's in prison in Iran. So from my perspective, like, I'll, I'll this is okay. <laughs> and, and so that was um, a little bit of a lesson to me, actually, to, to be a little bit more empathetic towards, <laughs> um, towards sometimes employees who have an entirely different perspective of what's a big deal. Very good, thank you.